Hello everyone, it's Stephen Clark and friends. Hope you're all fit and well. Back with another light-hearted look at the news from Thailand and across Southeast Asia. So let's jump in and see what's cooking today. A child sitting on a car roof gets a backlash from Facebook. A large python gets tangled up in the front wheels of a car. And once again, five killed in Sakao in another passenger van crash. An explanation of the TM28 and the TM30 forms. But first up, and the Thai government gets to blame for 86 of the 147 tigers rescued from the Buddha Tiger Temple in 2016. Who do you blame for the death of 86 of the 147 tigers rescued from the Tiger Temple in Thailand? Conservationists questioned whether authorities had looked after the tigers adequately with cramped conditions, small cages, the cramped cages enabling the spread of disease. To be very honest, who would be ready to take on 147 fully grown tigers at one time, said Edward Wick, the founder of the Wildlife Friends Foundation of Thailand. Conditions at the enclosure were not good enough to house all those tigers. Tens of millions visit Thailand every year, and it is quite a lucrative business, the animal tourist industry, but critics often state it's cash that rules and not the well-being of the animals. For a price in Thailand, you can ride and bath with the elephants, pick up a monkey and cuddle it, pose and do a selfie with a tiger. Animal rights groups have often criticised this behaviour especially with animals in cramped up cages and chained to poles and also forced to perform tricks for tourists. Now the tigers rescued from Thailand's Buddhist tiger temple. 86 of the 147 tigers have died. Thai government officials say that inbreeding damaged their health and have died from diseases. The tigers were vulnerable to illness because of the inbreeding, leading to paralysis and causing respiratory failure, national parks officials have stated. DNA taken from the 147 tigers indicated that the tigers started from six tigers who were the original breeding stock. Dr. Petropol, the head of the Department of Wildlife Health Management Division, told reporters at a news press conference. The Buddhist Tiger Temple in the western province of Kanchanaburi served for more than a decade as a de facto zoo where tourists could feed tigers and have their picture taken or selfies if you like. It is said the uh, zoo also sold tiger parts like uh, tigers and cubs in jars and things and bones and yes tiger parts such as ground bones are popular traditional medicine in Asia. Tiger hides can sell for tens of thousands of dollars in China. The Buddhist Tiger Temple is still operating as a tourist attraction and wildlife sanctuary, but apparently now it's all free. There are estimated to be more than 1,000 tigers in captivity in Thailand, but only about 200 in the wild, out of a global wild population of 4,000. Thai authorities said they would do their best to take care of the surviving rescued tigers. Maybe they should have left the tigers where they were, they might be still alive today. They stated we are mobilising team members, increasing our readiness and adjusting our plan. They also stated they will provide the best care possible. Yeah, sounds like you've got a winning formula there. Practice makes perfect, doesn't it? You've still got 61 tigers to go. Hi there, Mark recording for Talk Back Thailand. Here's a tale of Monty P's night out. Patty and motorists along a local road thought he had run over a stick, but instead it was Monty looking for a lift to Walking Street. So Monty hopped behind the front right wheel for a little lift. Unfortunately for Monty, he never made it oh, to Walking Street as he was DOA. They pulled him out of the front right wheel and he was a little bit squashed, <laughs> but he was DOA as I said. Poor old Monty. Anyway, he's a bit slimmer now for his experience and he's probably having a hiss up in the sky. Oh, the Lumpung area. Now we've got children riding around on top of cars. The photo of a young boy on top of a car has been doing the rounds on social media. It was first discovered on Facebook. A child in school uniform was photographed on top of a car in the Lumpung area on one of the main roads which is in northern Thailand. A fury is raging on Facebook at the moment whether people agree with this or disagree that the parents put their children on top of the car for perhaps a little bit of publicity. Well, they certainly got it. I mean, who in their right mind would let their child ride on the roof of a car like that? The mother of the child has been questioned by police. She said her son loves sitting on the roof of the car and he does this regularly and she didn't expect it to cause such problems. You know, the kid probably likes eating bugs or something, you know, he'd probably come off the 
roof all covered in bugs. He's a bug eater. That's why he sits on a roof. Take him for a run down the freeway. Oh, you can't beat the open road. But, I mean, he could possibly put his head out the window and get his um, daily dose of bugs. Anyway, the police find her and... Uh, Told her not to do it again and given her a very stern warning. Ah, oh, well, this is not the only country it's been reported in, you know. There was also an incident in Australia of the same sort of thing. Last month I reported on a van crash in Sakao, where 11 workers were killed in a minivan crash. Well, it has happened again in the same area. This time, five Cambodian nationals have been killed. A young uni student lost control of his car veered across the medium strip and hit the van head on. And the same as last time, this was a border run from Bangkok to Cambodia. The Thai uni student who caused the accident, who is recovering in hospital, will be placed under custody, questioned and charged. And also, once again, this bus came from the Pratinam area in Bangkok, transporting migrant workers to the Cambodian border, where they would cross the border Klong Lek checkpoint back to their homeland. Unfortunately for some, this will not happen. Okay, grab your partner and let's do the TM30 dance. Let's go. Get it. Come on, girl. Once again, the TM30 dance. Yay. Grab you yourself a TM30 TM30 Yes, the TM30 form. One of the many attractions of Thailand. If you sleep somewhere else, you must fill in this form with full details. Yes, full details of every move you make. Johnny Siam reporting. A lot of people have been talking about the TM30. Now the TM28 has uh, come into play. So before we start talking about it, let's go back to the start. Thai Law, Immigration Act of 1979, Section 37 and Section 38. This two sections, Section 37 being the TM28, Section 38 being the TM30. The TM30 has and always will be for landlords, householders, whatever, to report to immigration a foreigner staying with them. The TM28 is for the foreigner to report, and this is in 24 hours of arrival at the destination. And then the reverse when you go back to wherever or your next destination. The Thai Immigration Police decision to strictly enforce sections 37 and 38 have indeed created an uproar. You know, the only people that can change any of this is the national legislator. The only one that can change that law. It's not the immigration. It's not all of that. It has to go to the national legislator because it is an act of parliament. So it has to go through those proper channels. Unfortunately, not every office, as in immigration office, is the same. By persecuting foreigners that haven't got the receipt of the TM30s, uh, those kind of things. You're not going to be able to jump up and down and say it's not my responsibility when they're already crucifying you. So, um, But technically, it's not the foreigner's responsibility. The TM28, yes it is. And they've really pushed that one. Mind you, these, these things have been in the bottom drawer for many, many years. But they're out there now, so you just have to grin and bear it. Providing you've done your TM28, you shouldn't have any problems at all because that can be just reported to the local police stations or immigration department, which is the closest to where you are. It is actually for tracking where you are in the kingdom. If something goes wrong at home or you need to be contacted, that can happen. Mind you, all the ties, they carry their you know, Thai uh, registration cards and all those kind of things, so that's easy for identification purposes. But for the foreigners, if something goes terribly wrong, those forms actually tell them and your loved ones where you are. Hope that helps you out. Probably not. Johnny out. Bye. Well, what do you think of that? Now you know how to fill in your TM30 form. Once again, let, let's uh, take it away, girl. Grab yourself, yourself a TM-34, TM-34, 